Now we need to figure out the cash disbursements. That's usually the longer process. And we're going to have to jump back to our prior budgets in order to calculate this out. So we start off with the payments for raw materials. Now this one we're actually going to get right from the balance sheet over here because we're going to make a similar assumption for the payments for raw materials, meaning we're going to pay for raw materials on account and we're making the assumption that uh, we, we're going to pay for it and then, I mean, we're going to buy it on account and then pay for it next month. That's going to be the assumption. Again, we could have, you know, more simplified assumptions, meaning we just pay for it this month, or we can have more complex assumptions in some problems saying that we're going to pay the payable over a certain amount of time frame. We're going to assume that in this problem, that uh, anything that we buy in terms of material, we buy it all on account. The, in in the one month and then we pay it off next month therefore in the month of june we bought all the materials everything in the accounts payable is for materials that we then pay off in july so that's why that number is going to go here so it's going to be one month off similar concept to what we had with the receivables then we're going to have the payments for direct labor we're going to bounce back to the direct labor budget here's the direct labor for july from step four of the budget and if we pull that number over there's that number here then we're going to go to the payments for variable overhead. Once again, we're going to jump back to our variable overhead budget that we have already calculated up in step five. And the variable overhead is here. So we're just taking the variable portion. You might be saying, why aren't we taking the total portion? Because the fixed portion in this case, I believe, was depreciation, not a cash item. Therefore, not on the cash budget. All right, so there we have the 